So today I'm registering for Japanese classes for the upcoming semester at Kyoto University and I figured I would show you what that's like. So today I'll be using my iPad to screen share and bring you along with me on the process. So first things first, we got an email um, containing the instructions for how to do this. So when you open that up, this is the kind of page you get. Um, and I'm not gonna explain it in this video because that would be an entire video itself. So there's this link. And so we're gonna go there and that takes us to this website and it gives us instructions. So we're going to, I know that the class I wanna take is the one not in the regular curriculum. So I'm gonna click that one. This is the class I wanna take, Business Japanese. So we're gonna to go to the registration page. So this step closes at 1 p.m. today <laughs> because I literally always somehow do things at the last minute, which is really stressful. So login ID and password, I think that is included. Yeah, so if we go back to the guidebook they gave us, that information is included here. Okay, I'm doing this wrong. So this uh, guide is split between the two courses, the two types of courses. So the one that I wanna take is Japanese courses not in the regular curriculum. So I obviously need to use that website and that password. So yeah, they're totally different. So let me do that. There we go. Okay, so on this form, you have to fill out all of your personal information um, and so I'm not going to do that in the screen record. Um, you also need to include your Japanese level and stuff. And then after you finish that, your registration for step one will be complete. So I'm going to do the sensitive stuff now and then not show that <laughs> and then show you uh, some of the questions that don't contain sensitive information so you can get an idea of what else is on here. Okay, here they wanna know your graduate school. So I'm in the Graduate School of Medicine, which is here. And then they're gonna ask your academic status, what type of student you are. I'm currently a PhD student. Um, whether you're an exchange student, which I'm not, or you're a researcher, so academic year. Here it's a little confusing. It's different from in like the States or maybe other places, but they count like one, two, three per grad school year. So I'm currently a first year doctoral student. So I would put like a one, even though this is like my fourth year at the university. So I'm not a fourth year student. I'm a first year PhD student. Although this is also a little confusing because the academic year starts over when this class is going to start. So I don't know if they want me to put two or one because starting next month, I will be a second year doctoral student. Whatever, we're going to leave it as it is. <laughs> I don't have time to stress over that. Student ID number, I will put that in. Next, they ask for your academic advisor. I always get this question like confused because we have technically two sort of advisors, your PI and then your like immediate supervisor and I never know who they're talking about. So I'm gonna put in who I think it is and also not share that information. Next, I ask for your phone number and your email address, which I also am not gonna share. So I'm gonna put that in right now. Okay, next they ask, what's the approximate total number of hours you've studied Japanese to date? I've been studying for <laughs> like somewhere around 10 years. So I'm just gonna hit the most. <laughs> it's not supposed to be, an, it doesn't need to be an accurate science. Like you're gonna be okay. Next, which level of Japanese have you taken before and whether or not it was offered at Kyoto University? So I've done self-education. I've taken, let's see, I started my Japanese courses at Kyoto University from Chukyu, I believe. So intermediate course, I'm taking the advanced courses. And then at other institutions, obviously I studied Japanese at my home university 100,000 years ago. So we're gonna check those as well. Um, I did not take an advanced course at another university. So that's what my spread looks like. If you select self-education, please fill in the name of the institution. Okay, no, I did not go to an institution 
So we are going to uncheck that because I literally just studied by myself in the house. Next question, for those who have taken a Japanese course at Kyoto University, did you complete the course mentioned above? Yes, I completed all the courses. I did not drop out of any of them. What were the reasons? Oh, if you did not complete. So that's not me. Which language ability would you like to improve especially? Um, I, my weak spot is always, 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 always reading. Um, that is my weakest link in Japanese. But honestly, like, I need to, in, like, improve all of these except for pronunciation. Not that my pronunciation is, like, native level, but it's, like, really good. So that's not something I'm concerned about. Listening can always be improved. Speaking can always be improved. Vocabulary always needs to be improved. Improved composition will, like, never be good. So let's see. For me personally, they only want to select one or two. So to especially improve, I'm going to say at this point speaking no let's go with listening because the kago when the kago is coming fast it just it's not it's not happening so we're gonna go with those two i feel like i usually select those two each year each semester early on i think i would hit speaking sometimes i don't know speaking is and listening are tied for the two that i really want to improve next because my speaking is still very like like an english like an american person like my phrasing, my syntax is not native, it's Japanese. It's very much English. How many Chinese characters do you know? I never know the answer to this question. So we're gonna go with like maybe, how did you read it? <laughs> They've changed it. Maybe a thousand. It sounds like hilarious when I say it, but there's like 2,200 everyday kanji that if you knew all of these, you'd be able to like read newspapers. And I can like only half read newspapers. So in my head, I know half the amount of kanji. So I just put a thousand. <laughs> Writing, I cannot write to save my life. Let's go with, this is more like a hundred. I literally have forgotten everything I learned. So that's laughable, but it's fine. It's, no one's gonna say this except for the, all the, you know, academic staff at Kyoto University. Question six, have you ever taken a Japanese language proficiency test? Yes. Oh, this is the first time that I can answer this question. How exciting. I took uh, the test last year, last July, and passed N2 level. So yeah, I've always skipped this question. How exciting. Pass. All right. Question seven, indicate the level of course you wish to take this semester. Um, so basically, this is just to determine whether or not you have to take the proficiency test, which everyone has to take the proficiency test unless you're taking the most basic level course available, which I am not, so I already know I have to take the placement test, because I've done this like 10 times. So you see they've got Nimo Ichi Reberu, so introduction, I'm not taking an introduction class, I want to take business Japanese, so... Last question, do you have an activated ECS ID? Yes, because I've been at this university for four years. <laughs> Great, we're done. Okay, after submitting that, you will be brought to a confirmation page where you need to check all of your information before the final submission, which I will do. Um, yeah, I can't really show you all of this, but there's some stuff I can show you. Okay, here we're gonna check all of the information we put in about our Japanese past. Three or more years, taking all these courses. Yes, juko shimashita. Listening and reading, kanji, past. Yes, submit. And then they warn you one more time, don't screw up because we will not help you. Okay. And then you get the same page saying you've been registered as follows. Cool. And then usually after this, you get an email 
immediately like confirming that things are done. You don't have to print it out. You can just close it. That's it. That is how you register for step one of Japanese classes at Kyoto University. There are three steps, I believe, each time you want to register every semester as a um, foreign student at this university. So um, I will show you the other steps as they come. But yes, so step one is done a few weeks before classes actually start. Each step has a certain time period you have to complete it within. And so step one gives you a week. It opened last Monday, which was March, March 6th at 9 a.m. Then closes today, March 13th at 1 p.m. I wish it was midnight. It's not. I don't know why they have these weird deadlines, but that is that. So that's step one. Hope it was useful. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.